Okay, fam, fam, bam. bam. Welcome back to our channel. Um, the series continues, Ojo. The series continues, and this video is sponsored by Salam. Yes, and on that note, uh, we have a special guest coming in a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, so do stay tuned because he's going to give us a few nuggets. Definitely, you know, he as is the always. Expert. We're not the experts. No, no, no. Uh, but you know what? It's such a pleasure having Fam Bam today. Yes. Uh, join us on the series. And how are you finding the series? You know, I know we've received a couple of comments mm -hmm. and uh, there's some value. There is a lot of value. And we're grateful. And there's value when you comment. 100%. That's it. And you know what? Today we are talking all things black tax. Whew. Black tax. Uh, what a touchy subject this is. You know what? We asked a couple of questions mm. um, last week. Yeah. And we asked you guys... Number one, is black tax holding you back from achieving your financial goals? Number two, are you a product or beneficiary of black tax? Or number three, what's your general opinion about black tax? And yeah. we're grateful for those who did um, respond and comment. Mm -hmm. We will read a few of them out. But before we read the comments, yes. babe, what does black tax mean to you? But I don't think for me, I would call it black tax. Okay. I would call it family responsibility. Why? Because I feel a little bit responsible to give back to my family. I know mm. that um, they don't come from privilege. Mm -hmm. And therefore, me being successful, I need to help out where I can. Okay. Okay. So you see it more as a family responsibility, no? Yeah. Okay. A family responsibility to help out where I can. Where you can. Yes. So underline, bold, highlight, uh, king, capitalize. Everything. All those. Use a different font. You know, <laughs> italic. Italic. <laughs> everything. <laughs> where I can. Yes. Very pivotal. For me, what does black tax mean to me? Similar to Rekho, it does mean um, family responsibility. Mm, mm. It also means that um, sort of I give back mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. I give back as a, as a gesture of being grateful as well as um, trying to help out again yeah. um, my siblings or my parents, yeah. whoever it may be, who needs the help. And, and very important, I also said, where I can. Yeah, because I mean, like the word tax in itself, for mm. me, every time I think about tax, I think about, you know, when my, my salary money is gone gets and, taxed yeah. and I'm just like, oh my goodness. So you don't want it to feel like that. You want it to feel like you're giving back, right? Right. And mm. um, Fam Bam did answer. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's read that some of give, those Give comments. us a bit of answers. So you can read the first one, my baby. All right. So, um... Nombuyiselo, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. And Yembezi is your surname. You you answered like this. Black tax shouldn't hold you back from achieving your financial goals. And there's nothing wrong with assisting your family as long as it doesn't result in you suffering. Mm. The problem with black tax starts when parents or families start feeling entitled to your salary mm. and making crazy demands, she says. Mm. Some of my family members don't talk to me because I started setting boundaries to ensure that I don't suffer and end up <laughs> depressed. Yeah, no. If I could. What? What? Yeah. I that's... couldn't agree more, though, yeah. really, honestly. Yeah? No, definitely. Um, I'm going to read a comment here. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> to, I'm not going to pronounce her name, but thank you so much for commenting. You say, I feel like my blessing lies in black tax. I sent my normal black tax home and help out the rest of my family where I can. And I've never gone hungry since I'm working for the past 22 years. I even get my promotions, though not through not though not easy as some people but i've learned to fight with god mm. so i think for her it's mm. almost like mm. tithing right yeah. when you tithe 10 per percent mm -hmm. she's giving that 10 percent to her family and yeah. that's where her blessing lies okay let me read you one more fam um i've got here um, let's see no non do me so zandi okay yeah i get i get all the nons eh? uh she says yeah it holds a lot of us back but we soldier on i think it's important to put boundaries in place though again boundaries mm, came, mm, it's mm. coming up again right mm -hmm. uh if you really cannot afford something your family must know yeah very important i think yeah. that is crucial yeah set the boundaries yeah they definitely. should know what the limit is Mm. When it comes to black tax, yeah. Okay, my last comment in Don BK says mm -hmm. black tax is a necessity for black people. Helping your family shouldn't feel like a burden. However, your family shouldn't feel like 
Uh, however, people shouldn't fulfill their dreams mm. through the breadwinner. Yeah. Renovations every year, Ooh. financial demands, Oof. taking care of expenses that are not necessary. Black tax is about helping out, not being drained. And I completely what? agree with that comment. Um, sure. I mean, like, yeah, mm. it's, it's, it's a big topic. And you know what? At the end of the day, you want to be able to provide for yourself yeah. as much as provide for others. That's it. You being your family. And yeah. and it, it mustn't feel like, you know, it's draining you and that it's a demand That's you, know, you must yeah. give because of this reason and this reason. Yeah. I, I, you know what? The last uh, lady, what's her name? Ndombi. She she mentioned something so wow so so important I what? think when she said it shouldn't fulfill it shouldn't come from a place where it fulfills their dreams mm. such as renovations and they want oh, to achieve their okay, personal okay. goals through yeah. your money yeah, yeah that's where black tax becomes an issue yeah. And, and I resonate with that because mm-hmm. that's where I believe now family members are taking advantage of you. Mm-hmm. And of course, I'm not saying that shame um, if you, you feel like you want to extend your mother or your grandmother's uh, house. That should definitely come from your own personal giving. Yes. Mm-hmm. But for them to be like, but you can see I'm trying to build a bigger house. <laughs> I'm trying to renovate my kitchen. So come, please mm-hmm. bring that money here every mm-hmm. month. Mm-hmm. That's 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 where the danger is. Mm-hmm. That's where the danger. But Rejo, where now? Nah, what's your experience with black tax? Growing I think, up in your I 20s? think I think um, I had a responsibility as being uh, the firstborn child is to give back to my family. Ronaldi firstborn. The firstborns they go through the most. Yeah. Uh, deputy and then parent. Ronaldi lastborn we enjoy. Lastborns you enjoy life, life enjoyment. Life enjoyment. <laughs> but um, you know what? You yeah. gave back because you understood the situation. I gave back because yeah. I understood the situation. Yeah. And uh, you know what? You don't want to see your family suffer at all. The the problem comes, I think, or the mm. difficulty comes. Mm. Or the when, danger. No, not the danger. Please, <laughs> please. This right, wants right, to say, right, and right. the danger, please. <laughs> not the danger. But the difficulty is when now, obviously, you're trying to progress in life. And, and, I, and sorry, I know there was another comment here where the lady was actually talking about the fact that um, it's holding me back and there's nothing oh, I can do. Yeah. It is also the main reason I'm not married yet. Oh, wow. Yo, that for me was a big factor because now imagine, you know, you're providing a lot for your family. Yeah. You're growing older and you aren't able to now get married to provide for your partner I mean like this is a woman but if it is from a male's perspective yeah. how is he supposed to pay Lobola you know if he's still providing a big lump sum of his salary to the family so it is hard mm. and it's, I guess again it comes with communication and talking yeah. to your family that you know what I'm very serious about this person I need to start paying Lobola yeah. and I need to provide for them and I mean mm. like getting married it is sort of like That's starting your own family mm-hmm. and it is a big big it, i think black tax is emotionally taxing as much as it is financially taxing yeah mm. and so for you you found it as what um a period in your life when when you were the transition out, the yes. transition the transition yeah. is a bit difficult I, mm. I, it was difficult for me mm. um in the beginning because it's like it it made me feel like i'm um, firstly, because getting married already feels like you're letting go of your family, which is yeah. hard. Um, you're stepping into a new family, which is joy. It's like a whole yeah. mix of emotions of getting married. But but um, okay. but yes, financially, yeah. it's hard because now so, it's yeah. about providing for our family and still being able to provide. And also having that tough conversation before marriage with your partner to say, mm. listen, this is the situation. One thing you need to not do is hide those stats. I mean, like that's why you're getting into a marriage. You mm-hmm. need to you know, be open with your finances and say, listen... I've got SARS test tax as well as family tax. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. And your partner needs to understand and you come to an agreeable amount to say that this is what we'll be able to provide for the family, but yet still enjoy our life. Agreed. Agreed, fam. And I mean, for my my personal experience in my 20s with uh, black tax, mm-hmm. I, I took it on um, gracefully, if I can put it that way, because I, I understood that at a point in time, my siblings needed help. Mm. You know, whether they were um, um, jobless at that moment because of retrenchments or whatever the case may have been at that time in life. Yeah. Um, I, I, felt, I felt 
proud and privileged to assist and help. Okay. It made me feel good that I can help out. You know, it made me feel like, listen, what he say, you're a young man and this is what you're doing now. You're assisting and helping. It was sort of grooming me yeah. to say, listen, one day you're gonna have to provide for mm. your family. You know, my wife, my kids. So it was. So sort it's of, teaching you principles. Exactly, principles of gratitude and principles of giving, mm. and and that's what I gained. You know, and obviously as a child of God. One thing is we we always willing to give, we always wanting to give. You know, okay. it should be easily, uh, it should come easy for us to give and assist where we can, right? Mm-hmm. But again, I'm I'm grateful that in my experience, it didn't come from a point where I I was sort of constrained with my finances, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh my goodness, you're asking for too much, and I just cannot, and I cannot. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm grateful that it didn't go that far, okay. um, but. I mean, hearing from obviously you, fam, bam, and what you've shared for some of you. I mean, the experience was really that deep and that real, where yeah. it, it really it pained you and it pains you. Maybe even now you're going through it and you're like, shucks, you know, it's so hard for me to reach my goals, mm. like the one lady said, to to achieve um, whatever it is that I want to achieve, like marriage, because now. Again, I want to bring it to where we are now, fam. Because the transition, like Rahul was saying, we had to discuss black tax even when we just got married. Yeah. Because we understood, obviously, that we have to assist our families, and that being married is such a big, wow, it's a big responsibility. Not just for the two of us, but like we now taking on more people because I take on your family, you take on my family, and when my family knocked on the door and says I need help, or when your family knocked on the door and say Hey, can you assist here? We we had to chat about it. Mm, mm. How did you find that process? Do you think, like I said, yeah, like I said, it's it's it's, it's a big transition, yeah, and you just have to communicate well. I mean, mm. some families don't communicate well, and that's, and that's the horrible problem, yeah. part is yeah. that people come demanding things that really is so hard, and like you're saying, the other person wants to build renovations. Yeah. It's like, but like, I will help where I can. I think that's at the end of the day the conversation that we can have. <laughs> You know, and I love what Sanlam has a lovely um, confidence rule, number 24. Mm-hmm. Um, it reads as follows, fam. Make good choices today for your families tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Make good choices today yeah. for your families tomorrow. Yeah. And that's exactly what we applied, that principle, um, in our in our family. And our family being me and Rahul for mm-hmm. now, uh, that is. Is that we made choices that said, listen, mm-hmm. um, we can afford X amount right yes. now as as a household. Yes. Um, and so we cannot be, what, what can I say? We cannot, we cannot bleed out too much of our finances because listen fam, oh, you cannot pour out of an empty cup. 100%. Right? 100%. The Bible teaches us is that we also need to give away from where we can, right? Yeah. So that you don't also sit back and we're like, okay, babe, but now, um, mm, 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 mm. Now the grocery changes. Now we can't eat white bread. It's now maybe... Uh, no, you can't eat bum bread. Oh, can you eat brown? Yes, oh, white. Yeah, you understand what I mean? You lessen the takeaways <laughs> and so forth and so on. But I know it's sacrifices that we do need to make where yeah. we can. Um, but I, I just feel like Black Tax, it has to be communicated, not just between the two of us. And I think, uh, you know, we need to include families. And that's what we did. Um, it's all about chatting with the extended families or those who you are who are dependent on you, mm. right? Mm. But and I'm, make them aware. Of that. And make them aware. But where you may lack in having to share and speak and, and and talk about it, this is where I would advise that you get an expert come in and assist you. And that's what we have. Yeah. But before we bring in our expert, uh, mm-hmm. I've got actually a confidence rule number 27, which says having the right pers- right support can help you through the unthinkable, which is so Ooh. true. Because if the you right can't support. have yeah. that tough conversation with your family, yeah. you ask your financial planner or advisor to assist. Yeah, but now it, it can be hard as well to talk mm. to your family, right? And it can be hard to bring in a financial expert such, a, a, such yeah, as a financial expert. Yeah, knowing uh, a, black people. Yeah, because <laughs> there's that notion of, yeah, but now I must go find this financial advisor or financial planner. How are they going to take my money? I can't trust them. Um, you should know better as the person. True, who's, right? Who's, who's, who's looking for a financial planner. My, my, my question would be like, if you're, if you're so afraid to, to maybe rely and depend on a financial advisor or planner is that they are the experts. Mm-hmm. When you're sick, you go to the doctor, you trust them. 
100%. So when you're financially constrained and confused and don't know what's going on, why not bring in somebody who's reputable, who has all the knowledge and guidelines to help you navigate through those tough moments where such as black tax because True. yo like you said it can be tough to speak to family you know because i mean this is family i mean this is Ooh, relationships that you don't want to uh, break and you want to make that is true and and you want to sort of um mold and keep 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 good right that is true yeah but just we are about to bring in our special guest yeah let's let's bring our, our special guest uh you know him very well um he was here before as you have been asking for him and he's back welcome back cool you know, man. it's great to be back i feel special for having the furniture rearranged <laughs> <laughs> you don't usually come to someone's house and rearrange the no, furniture do no, you no 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 so i feel i feel special so one tick for me yeah so welcome awesome. back okay awesome so yeah the financial expert is here and um yeah what does black tax mean to you my goodness yeah uh, firstly i think i must say it's been an absolute privilege i mean the first response or the response to the first video was absolutely amazing so i just wanted to thank the fam for that uh, because the engagement was really really great Um so yeah with regards to black tax oh man I've been thinking a great deal about this um yeah. mm-hmm. and I've been excited to have the conversation but also at the same time quite nervous okay um and the reason I was nervous is pretty simple it's because this conversation really matters to me okay. uh, and so because it matters so greatly I need to try and marshal my thoughts and ideas as well I can I to try and express why it matters so greatly to me. Mm. Uh, so with regards to black tax I think the segment uh, before this one was very expertly handled yeah. uh, because what I liked about the segment was that you differentiated in quite a bit of detail um between black tax and family responsibility because I do not think that they're quite the same thing. Okay. Uh, it's one thing to take care of your family as and when you have the means. Yes. Yes. But when there is a coercion or an obligation that's attached to that responsibility then for me it ceases to become family yeah. uh, wow. responsibility okay. and becomes black tax. Okay. I describe it to friends some friends of mine when I talk about black tax as a color spectrum. Mm. So where on the one side you've got one color and on the other side of the spectrum you've got a different color. So think about a yellow and an orange for example. Okay. Um and towards the middle of the picture the color sort of fuses and one another but there right. isn't a precise point where right. the yellow becomes the orange yes. and ceases to be the yellow and vice versa. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of think about black tax and family responsibility in the same light. It's very very difficult to try and draw that line between black tax and family responsibility and I think that's where a lot of the conversation gets muddy. Wow. Mm. So interesting. I never thought of it like that. Like yeah, that, have, no? Have you, no, I haven't. Um that's very sure. interesting the way you described it. Mm. And um for you what do you think that a individual can do on a financial perspective to sort of help themselves i mean like we spoke about confidence rule number 27 having the right support can help you through the unthinkable and yeah. you being out of our, um help what would you say yeah so i think the first question was great as a preamble to answer the second question that you've just asked mm-hmm. now because i think the first thing that one needs to be able to do is actually differentiate between black tax and family responsibility and not conflate it okay. and that's the point if the fam bam are going to take anything away from what i say today it's probably that mm-hmm. the family t- family responsibility and black tax are not the same thing okay. and the minute you're able to differentiate between the two concepts i yes. think that already sets you on a more fruitful path going forward mm-hmm. because okay. lots of people do not know what the difference is uh, and so as a result cannot make adequate provision for it because I mean you can't clearly define it and so how are you expecting to actually deal deal with it properly so the first thing is to be able to define what it is okay. and recognize and I mean I understand why people tend to conflate the two concepts yeah. it's easier for for simplicity and ease of understanding purposes um but as I say to some of my friends you know what uh or what you gain from simplicity and ease of understanding you almost invariably lose mm. uh yeah. in depth and nuance yeah. and i think it's important that you are able to differentiate it the second thing is you've got to be able to have the conversation with your family members um and you guys touched on this in the previous segment yeah. you you have to be able to do it it's about managing expectations yeah. that that's what the conversation ultimately boils down to yeah. but i'm sympathetic to the fact that it's a very difficult conversation to have a very sensitive and right it, it is a very sensitive yeah. topic and you mentioned in the previous segment that i mean it's family members and yeah. you want to trod carefully around them because yeah. these are relationships that you're trying to build yeah. especially when you go into yeah. an, into a marriage you know you don't want to upset uh, Rehos side of the family of course, you you have yeah. to build those relationships and so it becomes very difficult to say no yes. but then there are people who it's naturally difficult for them to say no because temperamentally they're just more agreeable than others yeah. Yeah. so no yeah. is much more difficult to utter for uh, uh, an agreeable person than it is for a disagreeable person mm-hmm. for, so for people like that i would say or well, firstly you have to understand yourself if you know that you are a temper an agreeable person as many of us know we are, we are yeah. you have to admit it 
and then seek some assistance. There's actually a brilliant story that was told to me by a guy by the name Sipo Mnwabe. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a mentor of mine. Yes. Uh, and he was a financial planner a few years ago, and he had a client who had unfortunately lost her husband. Mm -hmm. um, and so she was due to receive the death benefits of that life cover. Uh, and out of the blue emerged some uh, distant family members. And lo and behold, oh, they, they, they wanted, yeah, and lo and behold, they wanted to stake their claim on the death benefits. Um, but she was a, a conflict averse person. And so she called Sipo and she said, listen, I'm going to give these people the money. How do I go about it? And Sipo said, okay, uh, simple instruction. Go to them, give them my telephone number, tell them that I'm your financial planner, tell them to call me for anything that's related to your finances. And so she did, as Sipo said. Okay. Took the contact details, went to her family members and told them that this is my financial planner. If you need anything that will touch on my finances, Speak to you should talk to him. Yeah. Okay. Wow. End and of story. Listen, that, that is it. <laughs> that is... That is fantastic. Okay? Yeah. That, no, that is exactly confidence rule number 27. Exactly. Exactly. If in you, practical sense. In practical sense. Mm -hmm. If you cannot handle it, get an expert, get somebody who knows yeah. how to deal with finances and money and maybe relate better with your yeah. family because yeah. maybe, yeah. like you said, you're an agreeable person. Yeah. Because one thing that was um, racing in my mind while yeah. Pila was speaking was that it's almost like black tax is attached with blackmail. Ooh. Black tax, yeah. blackmail. Do you understand? Yeah. So if you say no, because I heard you say, you, we need to know when to say no. Yeah. Yeah. But if I say no, then it's blackmail. Oh, really? Yeah. You're saying no. All right, After if all you do that, that, all that I've done, for, all you. I've done yeah. for you, this is and that. Yeah. Like so, I said, um, it's very emotional. It, it is very sure. difficult. And, but I mean, there are people who can, and in fact, it'll help you from a personal responsibility uh, standpoint as well, to be able to say no. In fact, if you can't say no, the best thing to do is sit down with the people who yeah. are um, requesting such from you yeah. and be frank and open and be as honest as possible with them and say, yeah. Ma, of this 10,000 rands that I'm earning, mm. 6,000 rands of it is going towards rent. Mm. Uh, 500 rands of it is going towards uh, groceries. Yeah. Yeah. 1,000 rands of it is going towards uh, transport and yeah. moving myself from A to B. Right. I need to move about because right. I'm working. Right. Uh, and of that, I've only got 2,000 rands left. left. So basically, spend. be transparent yeah. about your, your pay slip. Yeah. And your no, budget. not pay slip. But, no, but that's where it's going. Because for me, I feel like as a young person, you almost don't want to... I don't know, maybe it does just me. But I didn't want to like... You know, just be transparent with my yeah. pay no. slip, and it's like I earn X amount. Now yeah. they're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 all right. No. From that one, then we take this amount. You know what I mean? For my um, opinion, I think that yeah. be transparent about your budget. Okay, the budget. And then yes. your budget for the month, and understand mm. that you know there's 30 days in a month, or plus, or minus. Yeah. And um, just being transparent in that sense, but also being transparent about the fact that you also got savings and investments. Right. In the sense of you don't have to say amount. But in the sense of those things are so important as well mm. as much as just giving money because there's so, there, there could be a limit because and also having that detailed description as much as you being transparent transparency has to come from the other yeah. side as well yeah. right absolutely I could not sure. have said that better myself yeah. right and I, I just want to take you back Pila because earlier you said that one of the first steps is to define. Uh, if it is black tax or if it's family, family responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. But now maybe there's a fan bam out there saying, okay, but Pila, then when will I know if yeah. it's black tax? Yeah. Like, can you, what are those, um, what do they call them? Flags, yeah. red flags. <laughs> when you're like, oh, that's black tax. Or, oh, no, this is family responsibility. Yeah. Can you maybe think up or, or let us know yeah, no, absolutely. So it'll, it'll just obviously, be it. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it'll differ from person to person. Mm. So yeah. it has to be observed on a case by case basis. Okay. Uh, so I cannot give a sweeping answer because okay. obviously individuals have a varying set of uh, characteristics yeah. that inform their particular circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. So what will be black tax to me might not be to you. Mm. So I think we have to be careful in that sense. But the individual will know. So I've spoken to a, a pretty considerable number of young yeah. people at this point uh, who are having to deal with family tech, fa family responsibility and black tax. Now it's called family tax. You heard it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I've, I've dealt with a few the of mix, them. The mix, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've dealt with a few of them and the, it, it's pretty apparent to me that mm. if something is leading you to depression, yeah. or ah. to men mental illness, yeah. then it probably isn't good. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, as, as I said, I mean, I talk to a lot of young people who are in need of financial assistance. Mm. Uh, and what you find when you pierce into their stories, yeah. stacked to the, ro to the yeah. rafters, is, uh, you know, considerable levels of indebtedness, burgeoning levels of indebtedness mm. and uh, mental illnesses. Um, and I think when it gets to that point, mm. yeah. that's clearly uh, mm. where a, a line must be drawn. Mm. Because you don't want to be affecting yourself uh, mm. if, 
you know, as and when you are required to make such payments. So I think that's a pretty massive red flag. But as I described yeah. it in the very beginning, it's very, very it, difficult to define. That's why I define that, yeah. the, that, that spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. Because where I will draw the line is very different yeah. to where someone else will draw the line. Mm -hmm. And this is why a lot of people uh, react with a lot of resentment and mm -hmm. vitriol and scorn mm -hmm. when yeah. anybody speaks in any uh, critical way about yeah. black tax. Probably because it's very yes. difficult to differentiate between the two. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, just being able to look at your own uh, scenario yeah. and think about how you would advise an individual who is in your situation yeah. so try and extract yourself from your personal yeah. situation yeah. Yeah. to yeah. the best of your ability possible sure. and if you cannot manage that obviously that's where a professional will come in uh, and to try and look and, at your financial matters and say if, if someone else or if a person that you cared for was in this predicament how would you how advise that they get out of it and you then apply that same advice to yourself true wow wow mm. nuggets that's what you call nuggets Good song. nuggets it's saying it's a McDonald's mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but you know what? I mean, Ruhu, thank you, Pila, firstly, mm -hmm. for, for sharing that. Uh, uh, words of wisdom, eh? Like, no, 100%. Eh? I, I agree completely with that. I think also for me, it's like I'm saying is that as much as you're helping, also try and set yourself up for later. You know, because you don't actually know the time frame of the black tax. Yeah. You understand? And that's what I would say is like... To your younger self. To your younger self is yeah. that... Make sure that you're also still providing on investments and, you know, put that away on a long-term investment that you cannot mm. access. So mm. that by the time that you are older, you can still access those funds and that financially you're not really burdened. You're still helping yourself at the same time, helping your family yeah. if you need to do that. Mm, interesting. I mean, if I was to advise my younger self, I would really say to young Adise, um, Equip yourself with obviously the financial literacy that I need in order to handle um, tough black tax and like tough conversations. Mm. And with one of family the family members that aren't able, who are not financially lit, right? Mm. Yeah. And one of those um, tools for me would be obviously the biggest one for me is seek help, um, getting a financial um, planner to assist you in discussing this conversation with them in, in obviously in confidence and trusting that they will guide you to navigate through black tax mm. because as you mentioned Bila it, it's tough I mean once it leads to depression mental mm. illnesses and yeah, and tough. so forth it, it, it can really be toxic fam and what, what I have noticed that it becomes a generational curse instead of generational wealth, wealth. gosh I mean I think it's a wonderful sure. uh, note on which to uh, perhaps tail off our conversation because uh, when we think about the uh, the hand that a lot of people, black people in particular, have been dealt, yeah. um, I think uh, a lot of people look at their other racial counterparts uh, mm -hmm. and look at the generational wealth that they've uh, amassed over these years and mm -hmm. obviously see it as unfair that they have to keep looking back. Yeah. But what I would say to that is for those racial groups to get to where they are, uh, to the point of uh, generational wealth, yeah. sacrifice was required mm -hmm. because it was very easy for their forebears to uh, satisfy themselves inst instantaneously mm -hmm. and not make provision for the future. So yeah. if we want to get to the position where we are also enjoying uh, 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 generational wealth, wow. we have to be able to um, uh, uh, you know, stave off our current or short-term desires. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where I would say to people who speak in only a critical way about black tax, that you have to be very forgiving um, to our forebears okay. uh, because they were dealing with things that we presently do not yet know about. And the other reason I would say it's important to look at them with a little bit of forgiveness mm -hmm. is because you have no idea um, what future generations will one day uh, say when they look upon us. Um, they'll true. probably look at us with the same moral clairvoyance mm. with which we look at previous generations unfairly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think you must understand that, but also try and balance that with the fact that you need to get forward and you need to make sure that your future that. generations yes. can yeah. also look back at your life and say That's that my parents and grandparents did X, Y, and Z for me. It's That's a big it. balancing act. It is. Yeah, it, it is. is very... But yeah, wow. what a wow. conversation. What a conversation, fam. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, if you haven't already uh, answered some of the questions we asked about black tax, you can still leave them down below in the comment section. And we're not going to just leave you there because Sanam has gifts for days. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got two Satric vouchers yet again. So kind of Sanam, eh? So kind of Sanam. Really? With a thousand rand for you to use to yeah. invest and hopefully um, build your generational wealth, right? Yeah. And the question for this week's video mm -hmm. is that, you know, what is your goal with dealing with black tax and creating generational wealth for yourself and for the future? That's it. Awesome. Pila, you've been such a pleasure, my brother. It's been wonderful to be yeah. here. It's been a delight of mine. And yeah, 
It was, it was great to talk to you guys, as always. As always, as right? Always. As always. <laughs> Fam, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, you know, do the most. Do the, do the most. Subscribe. And um, yeah, we'll see you on the next video. Oh, vlog. Yeah, fam. I love you, fam. Bye.